I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. The Tanner Creek Stalker, 1993, submitted by Lex Loeb, age 49, of Cascade Locks, Oregon. Incident, summer, 1993, Tanner Creek Valley, Oregon. I had an encounter in the summer of 1993. I was running a trail, or rather a service road, behind the closed gate at the top of the Tanner Creek area. I was enjoying my run and my solitude, when suddenly something began pacing and following me swiftly and deep in the bush down below the trail. And it was talking. I was a good trail runner at the time, and was running on an open trail. I can't imagine how any person could be running as fast as I was through the thick brush and below on those steep mountainsides. As I ran faster, it ran faster, and continued to stalk me. I called out to whatever it was, and it mocked me. I called out, who's there, and got back something that sounded about the same. This terrain is not an echo chamber. I then said, hello, 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 and got back, hi-ho, hi-ho, hi-ho. I ran the hell out of there much faster than I normally could have to my car and got out of there. That may be the reason the Forest Service shut off access up there. It's probably a half-day or a whole-day hike now since they closed the road, but if you want your own experience, I suggest you try going up there. Fast Moving Sasquatch, 1994. Submitted by Dusty Domey, age 31, of Seattle, Washington. Sighting, September 1994, Mount Spokane, Washington. A friend and I were bow hunting on Mount Spokane, up by the ski lifts. The day was warm and clear. We both saw a creature outlined on the ridge above us, probably at a thousand yards or better. It was an upright figure, at least a foot or two taller than a tall guy, with a fairly wide body. We could not make out any features as the sun was behind it on the ridge, but it caught our eye right away because of how fast it was moving. At first we thought we spooked an elk, but right away noticed it was upright and moving on two legs the whole length of the ridge to the tree line, probably 5,000 yards. And when I say fast, I mean probably 30 or 40 miles per hour. It was as fast as I've ever seen an elk or deer cut loose. There's no doubt in either one of our minds as to what we saw. It actually kind of ruined our hunt, and needless to say, we haven't hunted Spokane County since. This is a no-bull story, and I swear by it. Watched on the River, 1995. Submitted by Melinda May Reynolds, age 32, of Kelso, Washington. Sighting, August 1995, Abernathy Creek, Washington. I spent a lot of time in the woods hunting in the Great Northwest. At this time, in 1995, I was not hunting, as I was four months pregnant. Instead, my boyfriend and I went camping along Abernathy Creek in Cowlitz County. This area was downstream from a fish hatchery and almost to the mouth where the creek dumps into the Columbia River. We had our tent on a flat spot about 10 feet from the river. We had a small campfire and were sitting around talking and enjoying the night when we began to smell something bad. The closest thing I can compare it to is an elk during rut. They have a very strong, musty odor. Suddenly, we heard something in the brush across the river on the other side of the bank. It was only about eight feet across, so we shined our flashlight over and saw nothing. I assumed it was probably a deer going down for a drink. About 20 minutes later, we could hear branches breaking and loud crunching. The noise became more intense by the minute, and from experience, I knew that it was no deer. I got a very unsettling feeling and again shined the light across to the other side of the river. There was a lot of thick brush and trees, but animal eyes shine when a light hits them. Suddenly, something did catch my eye, and I froze in disbelief. I saw a furry face looking back at me. I guess it looked like all the Bigfoot drawings I've seen on TV, but this one had dirty white hair, not dark. His arm was stretched a little above and to the side. His hand was up on some tree limbs as he was pushing them aside, almost as if he was holding a curtain back to look out a window. All I could see was from his head to just below the shoulders, but it was very tall. Where he was standing on the other side was above the river bank, on about a six foot or higher ground than we were. Given that, my guess would be that it was approximately seven feet tall, although I got the impression he was bending to look through the opening in the brush. The hair was longer around the head area than the shoulders and arms. Circling the face was all hair, yet the hair was sparse around the eyes and nose area. The hair seemed to stick up rather than laid or brushed back, 
about four to six inches long, kind of like those funny-looking lizards that have the frill around their head. His mouth was closed, almost drawn down, so I saw no teeth. The nose almost seemed like an ape with the wide nostrils. I almost swear the eyes shined back as red, but that might have been the fear that made me see that. I know deer and other animals shine yellow and green. He was not doing anything but looking at us. We threw sand as fast as we could to put out the fire, left the tent, and got out of there quick. Sheer fright would be a good description of how I felt. My boyfriend did not see it, but he heard all the loud noises in the brush and knew that I was good at identifying animals, and this was one animal I could not identify. I've been tight-lipped about this thing, knowing I would get teased, and have never told anyone. I've hunted everything from bears, cougars, raccoon, deer, and elk, and never in all my time seen anything stand upright and look like this did. I don't know if it meant us harm, but if it did, it had ample opportunity and did not. It just looked at us. I've heard two other people talk about almost the same creature in close proximity to this location. I can still see the face. I can still feel the fear and will never, ever forget it for the rest of my life. That's what I saw, and I'm a God-fearing woman. Bigfoot Followed Me Home, 1996, submitted by MJH, age 49, of Portland, Oregon. Encounter, summer 1996, Sandy River at Oxbow State Park, Troutdale, Oregon. I was camping with my son on the Sandy River at Oxbow State Park. I've been going there every summer for 20-plus years. In the morning after breakfast, I took my son for a walk through the woods. He was four at the time. We'd walked only a quarter of a mile when we came upon a ravine overgrown with vines and trees. I heard a loud crack and turned to see the ravine being parted by something very large. It was about a 100 feet from where we were, and the ravine was almost vertical, very steep and impossible to climb unless you wanted to cut away an almost jungle-like growth that was about 60 to 80 feet high. I thought it was a bear or a wild boar, or maybe a giant deer. I learned later from a park ranger that there are neither bears nor really big game in the area. I was frozen in fear for almost five seconds and couldn't believe what I was seeing. The foliage was loudly and violently being pushed apart almost seven feet across. Then a smell like a dead animal mixed with cat spray and a musk odor just overwhelmed me. It was so strong that if I hadn't been so scared, I would have thrown up. I picked up my son, who was stunned, and stared wide-eyed behind me and took off as fast as I could. I went back to our campsite and packed everything. Before leaving for home, I took my son down to the river and let him play most of the day, just to stay away from the forest behind my campsite. There were a lot of people playing in the water. I was more scared than I've ever been in my life, and not having anyone to tell, and not really wanting to, for fear of being teased. The next day I stopped by a small cabin in Troutdale, which I rented from an old man. I never unloaded from the day before, so I stopped to put the camping gear away. When I got back in my truck, I noticed a horrible smell on the outside and inside of the truck, but thought maybe I would hit a skunk or ran over some old roadkill. I ignored it and headed home. Two weeks later, during the evening, I went back to the cabin to get a toy train set I had hidden for my son's birthday. This was around 10 at night, after I got off work. I went inside, grabbed the train set, and that horrible smell hit me again. I started to shake and was so frozen with fear I could hardly breathe. I opened the door, my truck only about four feet away, and as I ran to it and threw the train set in the front seat, this incredibly loud, shrill-like scream hit me full blast from behind the cabin about three feet away. Then a gurgling sound, and then another scream. I jumped in my truck and tore out of there. About six car lengths away, I looked back to see if I could see anything, and sure enough, there was a Bigfoot standing right where my truck had been parked. It was about eight feet tall, with matted, light brown, almost tan-colored, long hair, maybe seven inches long. He had no neck to speak of, and I remember, as he was standing next to the cabin under a light, that his arms hung almost to his knees. He was just standing there, looking right at me. I've never been so terrified. I floored my truck and didn't stop until I reached downtown Gresham, about 10 minutes away. I will never know if he followed me from the park or just lived nearby. I do know that the cabin sits right on the same river and backs up to the same land as Oxbow Park, but the park is 15 or so miles from the cabin. About three months later, I had a friend help me empty out the cabin. While moving my stuff out, the old man who owned the cabin showed up. I joked with the old guy that I'd seen Bigfoot. 
He said, Oh, hell, they've been here since my great-granddad used to run choke chain at the old mill upriver. He was a serious type of old-timer and didn't talk much, so I didn't go into any detail with him. I hope I never see it again, as it was something evil. I don't know how else to describe it, other than to say I felt a presence both times that was one of complete terror and doom of which I had never before or since experienced. I'm a very caring person and love all animals and creatures, and I've never had this feeling about anything in my life. I don't think it was a normal one. Hell, before this ever happened, I would have gone on a trip to look for them, but for some reason, this one was different, and I know it was the same one that came down that ravine. I don't know how to explain it, but I know it was the same one. To this day, I won't go camping and sleep in a tent. I have to be in a motorhome, and I don't go exploring or hiking. I swear this is a true story and would even take a lie detector test to prove it. A Close Call, 1996. Submitted by Frank O'Connor, age 37, of Salem, Oregon. Citing late summer, 1996, Interstate 5 Freeway on the Siskiyou Summit, Northern California. I traveled to and from California to Oregon several times a year. In the summer of 1996, around midnight, I was driving my 68 Chevy El Camino, heading north on Interstate 5 at the Siskiyou Summit. The roads were clear, with stars in the sky. I was rounding a corner and came across the top of a hill when I saw a figure jump over the center divider. I thought it was a person, so I immediately hit the brakes. The figure stayed in motion, not running, but walking. He stopped almost on the center line, dividing the slow and passing lanes. I swerved and stopped pretty much in the middle of both lanes. With my car in the middle of the road, not more than 20 feet away from him, I could see plain as day that it was a Bigfoot. This was not a sighting from a distance. I came within feet of hitting him, and he looked me right in the eyes. We sat there just staring at each other. He was very large, over seven feet tall, tall like a basketball player, but built like Paul Bunyan. All around, built tough. He was kind of hunchback. His hair was a medium dark brown and covered his body, about three inches in length, and very unkempt. Just a hairy mess, really. His arms were incredibly long. His eyes were dark and matched his coat. They just blended. I don't recall any skin like I've seen in drawings. He had hair all over his body and face. He looked to me like a large human with hair all over. If you've ever seen the movie Harry and the Hendersons, he really looked almost like that. The build, the hair, and shape. It was like the person who made the character had seen Bigfoot himself. We looked at each other for what seemed an eternity. I was really trying to believe what I was seeing, and I looked for as long as I could. The creature seemed just as curious about me as I was of him. He looked like he was scared, unfamiliar with the territory he was in, and very hesitant to leave. I don't remember being scared. I was well aware of his enormous size and strength, but I never felt threatened. He finally started walking again, a few long strides, and he was off to the side of the roadway and gone. I had the chance to try and run him over, for the sake of science, I thought of it, hitting him and capturing him. Had I not braked in the first place and had not been paying attention, there was a great chance I would have hit him accidentally. I realized that I had come across a very rare opportunity to actually see this elusive creature firsthand, and he's better left alive and alone to dwell in his own environment. I always believed in Bigfoot, and now I'm a true believer. I've seen him. I can tell you it was not a hoax, and he does look like all the pictures you see around. Thanks for listening. I think you might find this video of interest as well. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.